And our live coverage of the volatile situation in Egypt continues. Deadly protests have poured into the streets. And for more of what uh, form of government may emerge when the smoke all clears, we turn now again to the president of ActForAmerica.org, Brigitte Gabriel, and the president of the America Together Foundation, Michael Gauss. Brigitte, you know, as I'm watching this here, it seems to me the Muslim Brotherhood has pretty much taken this over. It seems to me that radical groups now see this as an opportunity and they're weighing in and, and offering their support. You know, I was thinking about this earlier today. I, I can't think of any, any democratic re, uh, revolution that's taken hold in Arab countries. The only real democracy I can think of is in Iraq now. Uh, that is right. And the radicals are, are, are smelling blood, basically. This is their opportunity. They have seen what Hamas did in Gaza. And by the way, Hamas is a branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. And Hamas was democratically elected for the Palestinian people by the Palestinian people. Look at Hezbollah in Lebanon. They practically elected themselves into the government and now took over the government. The Egyptians are smelling the same thing. This is their opportunity. Ayatollah Khatami today in Iran in his Friday sermon said, we are seeing a rise of a new Islamic era in the Middle East. So they feel empowered. They feel this is their opportunity. And what happened in Tunis a couple weeks ago is completely different than what's happening in Egypt right now. The majority of Tunisians are moderate. They are educated. They are liter literate people. In Egypt, we're looking at a majority population that is illiterate, that is looking for something, that is striving through Islamic justice, not just democracy, but democracy according to the Islamic way of life. And yeah. that's what's very dangerous. But their long-term goal has always been to establish an Islamic caliphate faith uh, using Sharia and Islamic law. That's what they've wanted for the, the beginning. They've always been committed to jihad. Uh, they were formed exactly. in Egypt in 1928. They took responsibility in part for assassinating uh, former Egyptian President Anwar Sadat. Uh, their original leaders uh, and their writings influenced uh, Iman al-Zawari and Osama bin Laden. And it was, even though it was banned by the Mubarak government, its members ran for parliament, and, uh, and in 2005, they got 20 percent of the seats then. So, obviously, there is a very strong, there's a big stronghold of Islamic extremists that may very well take over Egypt. A very strong support. Well, Listen, Ayman al-Zawahiri was a leader in the Muslim Brotherhood, imprisoned by the Egyptian government. And this is exactly why Mubarak today cut off the Internet. He knows that Ayman al-Zawahiri will do appeals in Arabic to his base in Egypt. He will be a welcomed hero back into his own country. Now he is living in exile. We're going to see another replay of Iran happening in Egypt, like what we saw with Ayatollah Khomeini in 79. Yeah. We're going to see with people like Ayman al-Zawahiri and others in Egypt. How much is this about uh, Israel, Brigitte. Uh, this is uh, not really much about Israel. They despise Israel. Now, remember, Egypt signed the peace treaty with Israel as well as Jordan. And both countries right now are experiencing demonstrations in the street. They yeah. despise the Jews, and that's very dangerous for Israel right now. Israel right. is surrounded with volcanoes about to explode. You know, uh, Michael, we, we've talked a lot about uh, Islamic extremism uh, in the past. And, and you were, for example, a supporter of this controversial imam who wanted to build this uh, mosque at Ground Zero, and you and I had a disagreement. But the point here is, is, you know, moderate Muslims, are they often intimidated into silence for fear of what these extremists will do? We see the Muslim Brotherhood gaining a stronger ground, not just here, but they're also, it's reported, uh, involved in the uprisings that are going on in Jordan. Uh, is, in, is my question is, is Islamic extremism far wider and broader and expansive than most people think? No, it is not. If you look at 70 percent of the Muslims live in democracies between India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Bangladesh, you have a whole lot of people living in democracies. It is inherent in them. It's only in the Middle East democracy does not exist. It is a very critical moment in the history of the Middle East, our relationship. Sean, I think if the U.S. makes one single mistake, we will put someone like Ayatollah Khomeini in Egypt. I think we need to encourage the moderates. There is a whole lot of moderates. Yeah. We need to encourage them and bring them up. Otherwise, the brotherhood will take over. All right, we so, need that, to be so very that means... Careful. So From Israel's point of view, Israel has to be very cautious. The peace deal is between the people of Israel and people of Egypt. They need to emphasize it was between people to people. It is not a deal between right, me, Israel and Mubarak. 
Mubarak will be gone. Brigitte, so I guess what Michael is saying, and maybe what you're saying, is as bad a leader as uh, Mubarak has been, as much a dictator as he has been, it would be far better to help prop him up than allow any type of Islamic revolution to take place in Egypt. Uh, we need to I support need to Mubarak and push him here. and pressure him and, and doing like maybe an interim government, people that he can trust to work with the United States and make sure they, these people represent the people who are demonstrating now on the street. That will prevent the Muslim Brotherhood in taking over and it will still give the Egyptian people a new symbolic government of reform that we can work with and they will be happy with. All right, guys, thank you both for being Bridget, with us. We appreciate it on this busy you. night. And coming up